And maybe there are some actors who can disappear completely into their characters, but I think that we all have we all have all of it within us. You know what I mean? Acting is what I do for a living, and act act to being an activist and advocating for things that matter is who I am as a person. So it's more like putting the acting hat on more than it is taking it off to put the advocacy hat on. When you're doing a performance, you want them to be able to just accept you as that person. And so you don't want that to be too complicated with too much baggage. But you get a platform if you achieve some kind of recognizability. And if you get and, and that calls upon you to be transparent about what you care about. And in my case, I had some mental health issues at certain moments and really had help from them. And I wanted to be able to, you know, share that, help other people. It's meaningful to do so. So it's a tricky little shift, but I'm getting better at it. We're here because we're in the entertainment industry to advocate for the budget for National Endowment for the Arts. It's uh, frankly, compared to where I come from and all the other European countries, it's a minute amount of money, but I've seen the good that it does on the ground. I've seen the lives that it saves. I've seen the soldiers that have saved some sanity, uh, insanity and suicide. I've seen the people that saved some alcohol addiction and drug addiction. I've seen what it does in prisons, the, you know, with elderly people. I've seen the projects that the NEA funds and uh, they really are you know, saving the spiritual life of the nation. That budget is under threat every single year. The previous president wanted to eradicate it and we're here to use our minor celebrity muscle to try and ensure that the budget stays and is expanded. It's it's been a lot of fun. It's I mean I've grown up around the arts ever since I was little. Like I've been in all different types of classes. My my mom grew up in a small town. Her parents were addicts, and she didn't really have like an escape. So she went to the arts. And then whenever I was born, she really immersed me in all types of arts. And so piano classes, dancing, pottery, singing, anything you can think of. And so it's it's kind of been you know I've always been like an art kid and so being here like you know lobbying for funding for the arts has been amazing and I've been with such an amazing group of people who all I look up to. When talking to the lawmakers today it was really state dependent and what I found which is very true is in a lot of these states and in, in, in Texas in um, in Oregon those are both states that I had shot movies in and to speak to that and try to, um, you know, pitch arts a production as also a potential um, growth of jobs, of employment, of, uh, of of money spent in their state, and that all started from a bunch of theater kids, writers, this team of creative people that came together to get a project done in their state, which only benefits them. So I would kind of pick and choose to see like which which state everyone was from and really hone in on that. We certainly are speaking to people on both sides of the aisle. Traditionally, uh, people on the Democratic side of the aisle have been a little bit more receptive to uh, funding for the NEA, but I was really pleased the Republican representatives we talked to felt like that had shifted. And that, especially in the wake of the pandemic, there's a way where arts funding has made it possible for kids who were struggling, teenagers who were struggling, communities that were struggling to get access to some art stuff that's been very therapeutic. So I was really uh, inspired today. I think you know we had a, a pandemic of a virus, but there's a massive mental health pandemic uh, for young people all over the world. And uh, you know, I personally know in my own circle many people who's, who are suffering. My two kids, thank God, seem okay. Just today, I visited some friend here whose children are having tremendous difficulty. And I've seen what art projects can do. I work with refugees as well. I've seen that people who can't express themselves in words can express themselves in visual arts often, sometimes by moving and dance. And I know that these projects that, that we're hoping to support through the NEA budget really are lifesavers and are needed now more than they've ever been. In fact, what's really needed is a massive expansion of the budget. You know, I come from a country that spends about a billion dollars a year on arts funding. Germany spends about two billion. France spends about $3 billion a year, and America, which has six times the population, spends $200 million. So we're fighting to keep that small budget. It was everything, because arts being in schools is not about aspiring to be an actor or a dancer or whatever one day. It teaches you how to dream, and every kid needs to be able to dream. It's a way to self-soothe. Every kid needs to know how to find their way to something that makes them feel better when life gets tough, because life always gets tough. So for me, I'm advocating for kids to have something that helps their mental health throughout their entire life, and that's important. It was amazing, It was, and it was so fun to play a character who was so 
driven. Um, but, you know, Washington is an interesting city and it feels like it, it's, it's just full of characters. And it was really cool to play one that has continues to have a pivotal role. I blacked out every when I when we wrapped, I blacked her out. I just hit hit delete. Apparently, we make an impact. And if there's any use at all for celebrity, it's to try and do some good in the world. Because the rest of it is a bunch of, you know, narcissistic bullshit.